All right, this is Uncle Jam. We're back with another resource pack video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add in custom item textures into your game. This is not a mod. This is only via a resource pack. However, in order to see these items, you need to have Optifine installed into your game. So let's get into it. All right, so there's a few different parameters you can edit with these custom item textures. So I'll just demonstrate those. The first one is renaming. So you take your item to an anvil and you give it a new name and the texture will change like so. The next one is a damage value where as the item gets a certain damage value, the texture will change. So this iron sword, I've set that up. So this one has no damage and this one, the damage is significantly down. And so the texture changes. The other one is the stack size. So as you can see, this is an arrow texture and I have arrows in my inventory. And if I throw one away, it's the regular texture. As soon as I get five, it changes to that texture. So we'll go over how to do all these different parameters. There's also a couple more, which are the enchantment values. So if the item has a certain enchantment, it will display a certain texture. And yeah, we'll get into that. So let's go. All right, so there's a couple of things we need to do in order to get our custom item texture to display in the game. The first one is we need our actual custom item texture image. And the second one is we need a document which will tell the game when to display that texture in the game. So let's start off with making the actual texture. Head into your resource pack folder. If you don't know how to get here, I suggest checking out episode one in the series. Head into assets, head into Minecraft, into textures, and head into items. Now you wanna find the item you wanna edit. I'm gonna do the diamond sword, open it up with an image editing software, and create the image to look however you want. So I'm gonna do that right now and I'll get right back to you. Okay, so as you can see, I've created my image here. It's a nice fiery looking sword. So this will be our demonstration image. Now we need to export the image. So head over to export and you want to make sure it's a PNG and change the name to whatever you wanna call this sword. Try to keep no spaces in your name. So I'm gonna call it fire sword. Here we go, and we're gonna export it. And now you can quit your software, and we're good to go. There's Fire Sword. So now we just need to create the text file. So we're gonna back out of our items folder. We're gonna back out of textures, back into Minecraft. And now you'll see in my resource pack, I have a folder entitled MC Patcher. Now you're gonna wanna create this folder in yours if you don't have it already. So yeah, under the subfolder Minecraft, create a folder called MC Patcher. Let's head inside. And you wanna create a new folder inside here entitled CIT, that stands for Custom Item Textures. Now you wanna make sure you follow these steps, otherwise your image will not display. The, all your image files have to be inside of this CIT folder. So let's head inside. Now you can have various subfolders within this CIT folder. However, all of your images have to be inside this CIT. So I'm going to create a subfolder now because I'm doing a sword to keep myself organized and I'm going to call it swords. So you can create subfolders. You don't have to, you can just drag your images in whatever works best for you. So I'm going to install fire store, fire sword into swords. There we go. Now we need to create a text document. So let's pop open a text editing software on Mac. I'm using text edit. There we go. And we're going to make it a plain text. And if you're on Mac, make sure you change the encoding. So head into preferences, click open and save, head down and change the encoding to Western windows, Latin one, and you'll be good to go. Now I'm going to pull a little image up on the screen, which will show you all of the parameters we can edit for this image. So let me do that now. So as you can see, I have two sections, always required and optional parameters. So obviously the always required ones are always required. No matter what style you're doing, you always need to have those. And the optional are the parameters you can edit. So let's start off with type. You'll see there's three types, item, enchantment, and armor. Uh, in this video, I'm only gonna cover the item parameter. Enchantment and armor will be together in a separate video. So stay tuned for that video. So we're gonna type in type and we're gonna type item. 
Here we go. So now that's specifying our type is gonna be an item. Now we're gonna type items. So now we need to say what item we want our fire sword to display instead of. So in my case, I want it to be a diamond sword. So we need to find the item ID number of a diamond sword. There's a couple ways you can do that. The first is just look on the Minecraft wiki and it will let you know all the item IDs. The second is an in-game method. So let me show you that really quick. So here we are back in game. What you want to do is push F3 and H together, which will show the advanced tooltips and hover over the item you want. And you'll see there it is, 0276. Now we can ignore the zeros and we'll just plug that into our document. There we go. Now the next one we need is texture. And you'll see there's another option, which is or texture.demo1 equals demo2. So if, you're only, if your specified item only has one texture, you're just going to use texture. Now for a bow or other textures, sometimes items will have multiple textures. That's when you need to use the second option and you type texture dot, if it was a bow, bow pulling one equals your new texture. Maybe I'll show that in the second video, so stay tuned for that if you're confused. So now we want to type the name of our texture file, which is fire sword, and it's a .png file. There we go. Now we're on to the optional parameters. So let's get into it. So we're going to actually save our document before we get into the optional parameters. So head over, click save, and we're going to need to name it fire sword dot properties there we go and make sure the encoding is windows latin one and don't use the text so make sure it's the same name as your png file and hit save there you go and we'll install it into our swords folder so now our fire sword is ready to go so let's head back in game and reset our texture pack and you'll see my sword showed up Right there, we can hold it, and it's a real sword, but we don't want it always to show up for the diamond sword. So now let's head and edit the parameters. So you notice the first parameter on my list is damage. Now this one is pretty self-explanatory. It's the damage value of the item. So you can specify a definite damage value, such as say one or two, or you can specify a range such as zero to 24 or something like that. Or an open-ended range such as 24, 34 to whatever you want and just leave it blank and it will be anything above 34 or anything below 34 will be a negative sign and then 34. So for demonstration purposes, I'll just do when the damage is one. And just so you know, an undamaged item has a damage value of zero. So it only increases. So as soon as this has one use, it will display the fired texture. So let's reload the game. And you'll see it went away. Now we need to use the item one time. So let's go find a pig. And as soon as it has one use, it displays the fire texture. And since I didn't set a range, it turns back once it has two uses. Let's move on to the next parameter. So we'll head back over into our document. So the next parameter is stack size. This will display the texture when the stack of a certain item reaches a certain size. So we'll say stack size. Don't forget that S. And once again, you can specify a range. So zero to 64, or you can do a range of whatever you want. So we'll say when the stack size gets to two, now, the only thing is diamond swords don't stack. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to change this to the arrow item ID, which is 262. And we'll save it. And let's head back into game here. Let's grab an arrow. And you'll see immediately when the stack size was 2, it turned into my texture. There we go. So now let's move on to the next parameter. So I'll head back over. I'll change this back to 276, which is the diamond sword. And we'll move on to the next parameter, which is enchantment ID. So don't forget there's a capital I, a capital D, and a lowercase s at the end of this parameter. So 
Now we need to specify which enchantment ID we want. Every enchantment in the game has an ID. To figure that out, the best bet is to check the Minecraft wiki. I'll have a page linked below where you can head over and check that out. Uh, for this video, I'm going to use Fire Aspect, which has an enchantment ID of 20. So, what this will do is when our sword has Fire Aspect on the sword, it will display the texture. So let's head back into the game here. We'll reload our pack. We should see it go away. Now we need to grab an enchanted book. So you'll see I got the Fire Aspect 2 book. And we'll pop it on. And you'll see it's going to display our texture. Fire Aspect 2. There we go. And the next parameter is actually linked to this one. It is enchantment levels. So. And as the name suggests, it's the level of the enchantment. So for Fire Aspect, there's Fire Aspect 1 and Fire Aspect 2. So if we only wanted it to split display when it had Fire Aspect 1, then we just put a 1 next to it, save our document, back in the game, and when we reload this, it now is not displaying because this has Fire Aspect 2. So, as you can see with those two options, there's quite a lot of customization ability in terms of displaying textures based on what enchantment they have. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's head on to our last parameter. So our last parameter is nbt.displayName. It's an nbt parameter. So I've made a separate image, which I'll display, that um, actually shows all of the nbt options. Now right away you can see nbt.display.name and then you can see nbt.display.lore. Now I'm not going to go over the lore uh, parameter. That's more for map makers. If you're a map maker, you can use that because you can actually edit the lore in survival mode. But with the display name, you can edit that via an anvil. So that's helpful for survival players. So we're going to remove our last parameters here. And we're going to type nbt.display.name. Remember name is a capital N and equals. And you see we have pattern, I pattern, rejects and I rejects. So I'm gonna go over pattern first. So if we type pattern, this is a case sensitive name. So now let's say we type the name fire with a capital F and we save it. So check out my formatting here. I have equals pattern with a colon, no spaces or anything equals fire so i'm going to save that we're going to head back in the game here reload our pack one more time pop our diamond sword in here and we're going to rename it fire and you'll see right away it shows up with the texture however if we had it fire without a capital it won't show up so this pattern without an i is case sensitive and if you add the i that makes it case insensitive. So now we'll save that and you'll see if we reload our pack here. Pop back open the anvil and we type fire with a lowercase f. It now displays. So that's the difference between pattern and eye pattern. And that's how you use that parameter. Now rejects is actually an optional parameter optional parameter. So let me explain how that works. Let's head back in here and we'll type in I rejects. Once again, it's just case sensitive for rejects and I rejects is case insensitive. And I like case insensitive. So we're going to put case insensitive, I rejects, double dot. There we go. Now we need to add our options. So we're going to put a bracket and we're going to type in fire again. And now you want to put in the line and type in another option. So we'll say the other option is um, big boy. So now it will display this texture if the name is fire or if the name is big boy. So let's try that in game. And once again, I did case insensitive. I don't know why I put caps in there, but it doesn't matter. So let's reload our pack one more time. And we will try both names. So let's type in fire. You'll see it displays. And let's type in big boy. And you'll just see it displays as well. 
So that basically covers everything, except you'll notice I have the little star... I don't know what that's called, the little star uh, character. Now what that means is that can be anything that follows. So let's say we typed in, we redid this to pattern, not reject. So I pattern, and we type in flaming sword of, and then we put the little star. Now that little star means anything can go there. So you can type in flaming sword of whatever you want and it will display the texture. So let's demonstrate that, we'll save it. Back in the game, our final reload here. And we will type in flaming sword of, and you'll see it automatically shows up. So now we can type anything we want. We can type doom, we could type fun, we could type happiness, however you spell that. Whatever you want, flaming sword of doom. Boom, there you go. So that covers all the parameters for the item option in uh, CIT. So I hope that helped you guys out. Um, if you have any questions on this topic, it can be confusing at times. Let me know and stay tuned for my armor video. That one's going to come and that'll show you how to add in custom armors via the same method. And once again, this is all vanilla. It's just via a resource pack and you do need Optifine installed to have it display. So I hope you enjoyed this video, stay tuned for more to come, and we'll see you in the next one.